Avi Schiffman, 17 year old out of Seattle, Washington. You've developed one of the world's most popular coronavirus tracking sites, NCOV 2019.live. Uh, you're with us, and today we're going to be talking about not only his recent work, but also uh, his intro to coding at ID Tech. So, Avi, thank you so much for joining us today. For sure. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Um, we're going to kind of go into a little bit of your experience at ID Tech first. And so sure. um, you started when you were in middle school. What was it like attending camp? I think you stayed at UW. Yeah. Yeah, so I live in the Seattle area, so I went to the UW campus, and I think the first class I took at UW was a Python uh, game development uh, class, I think. I'm not exactly sure. Um, you know, it was really cool. I remember the instructor was uh, very nice, um, and it was it was a lot of fun. Um, however, I was in the kind of, uh, I was in like the little kid kind of section, um, and so I didn't like sleep over or anything like that, but uh, the next year, I think I went there like like two weeks in a row or something like that, like twice or something. I went there a long time. Um, and uh, I did the overnight one and I was like an older kid too. Um, that, that was a lot of fun. You know, there's a lot of really cool stuff we did. You know, the counselors were just so so interesting to talk to. Uh, the kids that were very interesting and just, you know, the dorms of UW are, are very cool. Just kind of being in the campus was a, a great experience. Um, I actually still have my key cards like over there. I don't know why I still have that, but um, yeah. No, that's super cool. And you, you made memories and, and yeah, really uh, one of the uh, instructors actually, they described you, I don't know if you've heard this, but one of the, the instructors described you as brilliantly creative and excited to learn something new. Hmm. And what impact would you say that the instructor or instructors have had on? Yeah, I'd say, I'd say um, I, you know, I remember one instructor particularly called Astro, I think was his name. Um, and I remember uh, it was just a, it was a really cool experience. Um, we did a lot of really cool stuff and he, you know, was, uh, I get, you know, they're all very nice and they, you know, told us many cool things, um, many interesting stories about, you know, what, what they do. And, you know, you know, I guess, you know, I took many different classes. Like one of them was like a, a 3D modeling one, which was completely different than programming, but, um, you know, all, all of them were just really cool. And, you know, it, there's a lot to gain from just the one-on-one -on -one kind of experience that you just can't gain from watching YouTube videos. And just, you know, you're, you're in a, a group with like, I don't know, let's say 12 other kids and you're all learning like 3D modeling stuff. Um, and I thought that was just really cool because people are just making the most random stuff and it's just a lot of fun, you know. And in, in the meantime, you know, we played lots of cool games. I remember, you know, playing Mafia like a several thousand times, um, a lot of fun. And, uh, you know, the, the dorms are just so cool. I mean, it was just really neat. Like I remember uh, one of them set up like a some kind of laser thing with like strings and stuff that you had to like crawl through. Uh, in like just one of the offices. I just, I remember lots of really cool stuff. I mean, I was younger then. I was probably only like 13 or 14 or something, even when I did the overnight thing. But, um, you know, yeah, it was, a, it was a really cool experience. I remember that there were some kids as well that were, you know, I guess my age now that had like a gazillion land years for going like every single year. Pretty cool stuff. Uh -huh. And then the, the food is also so cool because uh, we stayed in the UW kind of thing and we have this cafeteria. And it's kind of this all you can eat thing. And they just have everything from like unlimited Pagliacci pizza to just like anything you want. It was, it was a really cool. Um, and I definitely recommend it. Yeah, that's awesome. That's so good. And, and one of the things you actually mentioned was not only did you gain the technical skills of learning how to code, um, mm -hmm. but you also learned the soft skills. Share with us a little bit about the soft skills that you valued while you were with ID Tech. Sure. Camps. I'd say, you know, I guess uh, just learning with other people, I think is a, uh, is a really cool skill to learn. But I think what one of the, the biggest things about ID Tech is that we made a bunch of projects and stuff. You know, I see a lot of people trying to learn programming and stuff and they just watch these like 14 hour long programming tutorials where they buy some massive book from Amazon. But you know, you're not gonna really learn much just doing the same kind of to-do app that you do in these YouTube videos. Um, and I think what a really cool thing that we did at ID Tech was, you know, we made these big projects and we had like flash drives at the end where we got to like keep them and stuff. And I think just being able to work on whatever project we wanted to. So I think in like my 3D modeling one, for example, I made some kind of Star Trek animation sequence where I learned how to animate like the, the stars. Um, and I also learned how to make like the actual model and then like stretch it out. Um, so that kind of stuff was, uh, was really cool. And I think being able to work on those individual projects and stuff, um, you know, is a great way to learn more than just, you know, mindlessly following tutorials and stuff. So um, I think uh, that's a cool skill I learned. Yeah, no, that's so good. And you're able to hands-on or 
hands on mm -hmm. keyboard be able to learn and not just learn, but then also apply right yeah. away. And you'll have guidance by a counselor and instructor. Mm -hmm. And then also you can look to your left or right and, and ask your peers, hey, what are you doing? Oh, that's yeah. really cool. You could be inspired in that way. Right? Yeah, I mean, I, I remember there was this one girl that was making this like giant robot thing in my uh, class and it was really random, but uh, it was pretty cool. And then we learned all about like animations and stuff like that. I made this really crazy animation, but um, you know, just, it was just really cool. Um, just being able to, you know, there's not many, like, let's say, you know, in my school, um, there's not many kids that, that I know that do programming or three stuff or anything like that. So, you know, being able to just be in a, in like a, an area where there's a bunch of other kids that are also learning programming and stuff is, uh, is interesting because you can talk to them about, you know, more obscure kind of things that you wouldn't necessarily be able to talk to with like your school friends. So, yeah. 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 You kind of find your crew, you find mm -hmm. your niche. You yeah, definitely. I, I know a lot of the kids, I'm still in contact with some of them that, that I met all those years ago. So. Oh, that's so good. Well, I tech it's, we have about 450,000 alumni who have been coming to our camps uh, year over year, the past 21 years, mm -hmm. uh, campuses uh, worldwide at this point. Um, and recently we've transitioned quite a bit, obviously into the virtual tech camp space, mm -hmm. um, but really at the core, whether it's virtual or in person, our mission is to create life-changing tech experiences that yeah. embolden students to shape the future. And Avi, thank you. We hope that we were able to embolden you to shape the future. And just by looking at um, at this interview, and then also looking at uh, NCOV 2019.live. Uh, I think it's clear that you're shaping the future. Um, mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about NCOV 2019.live. Sure. sure, yeah. I mean, also, I think it's really cool that, you know, we're at the point where, you know, some random 17-year-old can use technology and combine it with things like global health and this to, you know, really help a lot of people around the world. I think that's really cool. You know, back when uh, SARS happened or, you know, other things, we didn't even have smartphones. Like there, You know, Ebola or whatever, there wasn't a website you could go to that updated every minute or so with uh, new information. I, I think so. That's pretty cool. But um, with my website, um, at its core, uh, what it is is that it's able to just, it's a very visually appealing and just easy to use website that you can use, you know, really easily on a smartphone or something and just get the numbers that you want. You know, maybe you're, uh, you're curious about, you know, you're checking up on your family just all around the world and everything is just all in one place. You know, it's very easy to access. You know, you visit it on a smartphone. The first thing you see is just, you know, the total infected, you know, total deceased, all that kind of information is just right in front of you. Um, and then there's other pages like the wiki and stuff, but you know, I mean, like I created this website because I found it just really hard to just find the information I wanted to. I mean, I started this back in like, you know, late December, early kind of January times when there was just absolutely nobody talking about this. And, you know, if I wanted the most up-to-date numbers, I'd have to go to kind of like local Chinese government websites and, you know, filter through government wordings and Chinese and, you know, all kinds of nonsense like that. Or I could read like news articles, but they were mostly out of date by the time I read them anyways. So, you know, I thought I could just, you know, do a faster and better job and I just kind of pulled everything together and, um, you know, just made a nicer looking website, uh, you know, that was in English and you can translate it into whatever language you want. Um, and, you know, that, that was that and it's, uh, it's been pretty popular so far. I think in total, it's about it's kind of hard to, to track properly these days, but it's around like 700 million visitors, which is a considerable amount of people. It's a, it's a lot. Every single day, there's about like 30 million. So, you know, it's a lot of traffic to handle. Um, you know, it's, it's a great learning experience to learn things like servers and stuff. I mean, I learned so much stuff just like on the fly. I mean, I, I remember there was a weekend where I stayed up almost two days straight, just like I, I completely learned the like beginner like stuff of like Linux and stuff because I had to set up my servers and everything. And I, I was using something called a, a virtual private server. And to set that up and everything I needed to, I needed to learn like Ubuntu and all that kind of stuff. Um, so I basically taught myself that in a a weekend just you know basic security to add on it to as well and you know roots and public keys and all that kind of stuff and i i learned that and um all that kind of stuff you know so many important skills i have learned i've learned things like you know git and all kinds of interesting just real world programming stuff that you like actual developers use all the time um you know there's a lot of cool stuff that you can apply to that and so you know it's been a it's been like an absolute like roller coaster of knowledge just working on this you know i've learned so much but, you know, I didn't even know half the stuff just before I started working on this. You know, there's so many great resources online. You know, everything I, you know, it's just, it's so easy to just search up a question. You know, 20 other people have the exact same question. But there's, you know, great YouTube videos on exactly what you need to learn. You know, there's so many great resources online. You know, you can learn anything. You can learn 
underwater basket weaving if you want to. There's just, <laughs> there's so much stuff uh, to learn. Um, and so it's been a great experience so far and just being able to generally help, you know, millions of people every single day has just been a, a really cool experience. So. Yeah, no, that's crazy. And yeah. one of the things that you learned actually was Python at ID Tech. Yeah. And that's what kind of has the back end or maybe the crux of. Yeah, I mean, right now the, the back end works using a language called JavaScript in a uh, server side. So it's Node.js. Um, and then there's also, you know, kind of HTML and CSS. I mean, it's a more advanced kind of HTML. It's called like EJS because I can put server side variables into that HTML. So um, I can like dynamically update it. It's, it's kind of more complex, but um, it, it's pretty cool. So, you know, a lot, of the, a lot of the foundation kind of stuff I learned, you know, at ID Tech, you know, Python, a lot of programming languages are very similar. I mean, I'm pretty confident that I could um, <clears throat> pick like any modern programming language. I mean, not like anything like COBOL or anything like that. But, you know, pick any language, say like Ruby. I don't really know Ruby, but I could probably learn it just because most programming languages are pretty similar at its core. You know, once you learn just the general concept of, you know, conditional statements like if and then and a lot of kind of stuff. I mean, the main difference between a lot of these languages is just, you know, a lot of the syntax and stuff. And, you know, there are deeper differences in everything. But, you know, it's very easy to just, you know, learn Java and then learn Python kind of thing. I mean, they're, they're relatively pretty simple. And, um, you know, once you're able to start learning those, you know, it's, it's kind of like real world languages. You know, once you learn French, it's very easy to learn Italian. So, right. um, you know, a lot of things like that. So, well, yeah, I mentioned um, earlier in the week we were talking and um, you were saying that half of the visitors that are going to your site are outside of the U.S. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did you ever envision this having such a profound impact reaching all corners of the world? Yeah, I mean, you know, I never expected the virus to become a global pandemic or my website to become so popular. And it was, uh, you know, it was another project I was working on. I thought it was a cool idea. You know, I could just uh, do this and it would just be pretty cool. I'd share it online, and, you know, start working on my next project. But, uh, you know, it turned out that the virus continued to actually spread. I mean, I never expected that. I mean, my generation has never had, you know, a big world event like that. And there hasn't been something this big probably since like World War II. So, you know, it's, uh, it's very um, surprising. But um so, you know, yeah, I mean, it's really cool. My website, you know, it's only like, I think today it's actually 47%, you know, from the USA, uh, you know, 8% is from Germany um, in terms of traffic. So, you know, it's very interesting. Um, and, you know, every single day I get at least one visitor from every single country. I mean, even Greenland and the Congo are visiting my website. It's, it's pretty wild. Um, and, you know, it, it's just, it's pretty cool. There's just so many people from, you know, all around the world that, uh, you know, they use my website and, they find it very useful so and you're incorporating the feedback too yeah i get a lot of uh, i get a lot of emails feedback. messages uh a lot it's, it's it's a lot um a lot of people have feature requests you know the, they'll send me an entire essay of things they want changed and stuff um you know uh there's just a a lot of messages i get and some of them are pretty useful like i remember earlier on i got a message saying the website was you know kind of negative i guess you know i was only showing how many people were dying and um you know being infected so they suggested I add the recovery number. Um, so, you know, I worked and I added that. Um, and now there's the, the total recovered and, you know, you can see the recovered for every single country. So, you know, I guess that makes the website more positive. And, you know, I'd like to, I'm adding a lot more things to make it uh, more positive as well. Like uh, there'll be like a, a vaccine kind of tracker page where you can kind of track the different progress of many different vaccines or antivirals, you know, what kind of clinical stages they're in, all that kind of stuff. And, you know, I'm also adding a page right now uh, to feature other, you know, I guess, youth leaders. And there's a lot of other, you know, young people that have done really cool stuff with, uh, you know, the coronavirus and not just technology, but just kind of all kinds of things. Um, and, you know, they don't necessarily have, you know, global media coverage like I do. So nothing would be cool to, to feature them on my website. So, you know, I'm working on a lot of things like that uh, to just con continue making the website more positive and, you know, I guess, give them hope to more people around the world. Um, but yeah. Yeah, no, you, you absolutely are. I think, you know, the, the data was going to provide us insights and the insights is going to lead us to take action and mm -hmm. hopefully beat this pandemic. And so, yeah. Avi, this tool that you created is, is helping uh, millions. It's reaching, mm -hmm. uh, you said 30 million daily, but yeah. you're impacting and, and helping and bringing hope to a lot of doctors and a lot of other mm -hmm. areas of the yeah, world. Yeah, I hope so. so. Um, have you, and one thing that I loved also is that you're uh, inviting some of your other young uh, tech mm -hmm. leaders on this yeah. journey too. Um, 
what are some of the things the, that you're telling them to encourage them or motivate them to? Sure. I mean, I hope that what I created inspires a lot of other young people to just kind of, um, you know, I hope that what I created just inspires more people that, you know, it's not necessarily that hard. I mean, you know, you can figure it out. Just, I mean, I spent a lot of times just in, you know, web development kind of chat rooms and just asking questions. And there's just so many people that are willing to answer. I mean, you can, you can practically just, you know, learn anything. I mean, there's just so many great resources and stuff. So I hope that, you know, I inspire more people that, you know, more than just technology, they just use all kinds of things and more than just the coronavirus. I mean, I think that, you know, there's a lot of really cool things that young people can do for the world. And, you know, there's a lot more problems than just the coronavirus. So, you know, I hope that, you know, some other kid, you know, maybe just gets the, you know, the last edge of motivation he needs to actually, you know, start working on a, a cool project. Um, you know, I think that there could be a lot of really cool things done in the world. If, you know, a lot more young people, you know, just, uh, you know, had more easy access to just kind of learning, um, you know, more technology things and just all kinds of stuff in general, just because, you know, it's so easy. You know, my website was not necessarily hard to program. Um, you know, any, any real web developer you could go to could probably make my website pretty fast. I mean, it took me about a, a week or so to get like the first version of the website done. But, you know, I think what's more important about it is that I took the initiative to create it in the first place. And I hope that, you know, I inspire a lot of other people to take the initiative and create it. You know, it's not necessarily a hard website to program, but, you know, it has a lot of, it has a very big impact. So. Well, Avi, I just have one last question. Sure. What excites you about the future of Avi Schiffman? Sure. So, you know, I, I have a lot of great ideas and a lot of things I want to do. Um, but, you know, I think one of the, the most important things that I see a lot of people, you know, comparing me to people like Bill Gates and Steve Jobs and stuff. The thing is, you know, I, I don't I don't like that that much at all because I mainly want to be the next Avi Schiffman. You know, the next Mark Zuckerberg is not going to create a social network. You know, the next Larry Page won't make a, a search engine. You know, I want to be the next Avi Schiffman and, you know, make tons and tons of just my own stuff. I want to I want to really make meaningful things. You know, I don't necessarily care about being the kind of entrepreneur that will just make, you know, a massive empire of all of garden branches and just sell them and make you know a couple hundred million or whatever and live the rest of my life happily. You know, I genuinely just don't really care that much about the money. You know, I have a, a lot of really cool ideas and a lot of things I want to continue to create. You know, there's a lot of things that have been created that, you know, I think are really inspiring to me. So, you know, one thing in particular is I really like the idea of Napster. I mean, I never used it um, and anything like that, but um, just because it was before my time, but you know, Napster was a terrible company. You know, they were sued by everyone who ever made music. But, um, you know, they completely changed music forever. You know, music has never been the same. So, you know, I'd like to really do meaningful things like that and, you know, continue using all kinds of things, even more than just technology to just continue making really, really cool things. But yeah, you know, I'd like to just continue making really cool things. You know, I never expected this to become popular. I wanted to do something big while I was in high school and, you know, still a teenager. And uh, I feel like I've definitely achieved that by now. But, you know, the next thing I make, I hope will be even bigger and even more meaningful. So I guess I'll have to see what I do. But um, yeah. Avi Schiffman, I'm excited. ID Tech is excited. And I think the world is grateful for the work that so, you did. So yeah. um, thank you so much for your time. Sure. Um, we're excited to see all that you're that you become. So thank you. Appreciate you very much. For sure. Thank you for having me.